everyone it's kelly i have a wrap up for you it's my september wrap up and in september i read a whole bunch of sequels this is them so i want to get into it it is the beginning of november so hopefully you see this in november not december my life is a mess right now it's the end of a school day I had a good one and the light is going down you'll see my cats probably looking their asses and just, okay so i've read one two three four five six seven eight nine books in september and so i want to go by uh ratings but i'm just gonna go right off the top and so the first one is okay the first one i'm going to talk about is cloak and night by evelyn sky this is the conclusion to the circle of shadows duology uh circle of shadows is about the it's in this imperial asian fantasy that has two sorts of magic ryu and taiga magic and so um the kingdom's warriors they have taiga magic and they are just graduating and two of the uh the two people that we're following sora i think her name is sora yeah sora and damon they're gemini so they're bonded and so they're going to visit their families after their graduation and damon his he was found by a um hunters he was living with a pack of wolves and so he's going to go visit the wolves because he considered his those his family and they come across a encampment of somebody who's supposed to be dead and they learn about this other type of Ryu magic that is not supposed to exist so this is the conclusion I really enjoyed it I read the first book at the end of December and I finished it on January 1st and I forgot all about it. I seriously thought I was mixing it up with a different fantasy that I read this year. But this one, it immediately sucked me back in. I knew what was happening and I really enjoyed it. So, yes, pick up this duology. Quick Asian fantasy. And I give this a 5 out of 5. Okay, so I read three graphic novels. I read Saga Volume Four, volume five and volume six if you don't know what saga is about it's about this couple the girl the woman is from uh she's a soldier she's a AWOL soldier and then her husband is from their warring moon and they're not supposed to be together their peoples hate each other and they have a baby that's a big no-no so everybody in this galaxy is after them and it's very sexual it's very erotic it's got orgies it's got a sextillion it's got two of my favorite characters lion cat and goose or gus the seal i think he's a seal and yeah uh very graphic my kids wanted to read this and i was like no <laughs> so yeah uh i love the series i gave volume four five i gave volume five a four i think yes this one wasn't my favorite i wrote down my thoughts so it might be spoilers so uh oh yeah in this one volume five there's a boy dragon sucking his own i can't unsee that and so and marco found Elena and it was just so great. I was about to beat Marco's ass for getting it on with the uh, the gymnastics teacher. Volume six made me cry because his mom. So everything, all the feels, and I'm going to be getting the rest of the volumes before the end of the year because I need to know what happens. I wish there was more Isabel in these volumes uh, because she's another favorite. Um, 
Lion Cat, Gus, and Isabel. I read A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin. This is book four in A Song of Ice and Fire. And it was from the perspective of a handful of the characters. Jamie, Cersei, Brienne. Oh, I loved her chapters. Oh my god. She's just, I love Lady Brienne. Um, or Sir Brienne. Whatever you want to say. Sansa. And, uh, yeah. Sansa with, um, Littlefinger and Arya becoming, uh, trying to forget herself. And Samwell. Sam? Oh, I love Sam. So, yeah. It, if you have not read uh, Game of Thrones or watched the show, I've only watched the first season. I need to watch. Um, it's about these warring families. Um, and it eventually comes to five kings and then four kings and then it's just a hot mess of whose dick is bigger than yours. Whose dick is bigger? That's basically what it is. And Cersei has the biggest balls of them all. Apparently. Um, so, yeah. And I know that book five, this book four and book five were halved. So, that's why some of the characters from the rest, like uh, um, Daenerys and all the others, are not in this one. So, book five I'm going to be reading very soon because I want to know what's up with them. And now I understand why that the show took a turn and went off script away from the books as it did because they're cut. And so, yeah. I'm going to be... I highly doubt that I'm going to be finishing the series before the end of the year because book five is like a thousand pages. And then the sixth book is like the prequel all about the Targaryens. So, yes. Really enjoyed this. And I want to watch the second season. I'm buying the Blu-ray. Not the Blu-ray. I'm buying the Steelbook editions and I'm not watching them. Why? I don't know. Once again, I ended up giving... A Feast for Crows of 405, just like all of the other books in the series. So, the next book that I read was a read aloud to my kids, and that is uh, the second story, The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. It's all about uh, Layla. Yeah, it's from Layla's point of view, and it goes into her backstory, and it's very frustrating and irritating. So it's all about these misfits. They're, well, they're not really misfits. It's about this group of kids who do magic. Layla, she has two dads and they run a magic shop and she was, um, she has been picking locks her whole life ever since she was bullied in the orphanage and shoved in the closets and so, I'm going to have to write down my thoughts because I read this in September and it's November, so. Um, I forgot that Carter moved in with Layla and her fathers. I ended up giving this a three because the characters, the group of characters that um, are the bad guys, very predictable. You could, my daughter, my 11-year-old, she predict, predicted who this lady was from the very beginning and... It was kind of so-so uh, to read when you already knew who this lady was. So, but we're still going to be picking up the third one because we love Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, it's a very cute story and yeah. So, uh, I think the third one is from Theo's perspective. really want to get into his backstory with the violin and stuff. So, yes. Neil Patrick Harris wrote a book series, if you didn't know. Neil Patrick Harris, if you don't know who that is, uh, Doogie Howser, Barney from How I Met Your Mother, Count Olaf from A Series of Unfortunate Events. I went back and forth with this next one to read it in September or October, and I'm glad I read it in September 
and that is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Ham, Brady Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is the Lady Janie's number two. It's all about Jane Eyre and Charlotte Bronte's character and uh, Jane and Charlotte are living in this orphanage or this house school for girls and Jane can see ghosts. And so she goes to this tavern and the guy that she runs into, I thought he was going to be a potential love interest for her. He works in this society for um, moving the dead on or capturing them in these items that they last had in their hands when they died and then taking it back and moving them on or so it seems and I've never read Jane Eyre so I didn't know anything and uh, the only thing I've read by Jane Austen or uh, Jane Austen did not write Jane Eyre the only thing I've read was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen that's the only British classic that I've read. I've read nothing by Charlotte Bronte, but I have read a graphic novel about the life of Charlotte Bronte. So I knew her backstory and knew that her brother was a vicar um, or a parson, parsonage, something like that. And that she had sisters, Emily and Anne. Um, so, yes. It talks about Mr. Rochester. It's all paranormal and ghost. I've up giving us a four out of five. It didn't make me laugh, but I did tab it once again, and I read some of the tabs. Um, first tab was what, and we understand, reader, that this is an, this is an extremely pedestrian way to describe something as bopping on the head. But after a number, numerous revisions and several visits with the thesaurus, that really is the most adequate description. He bopped it on the head with a teacup. So, that's how they caught the ghost. You bop them on the head. Uh, the second one was an eye roll. A couple of students in back whispered that he left Miss Eyre for Miss Temple. And what a scandal it was. This is like a real life romance novel. And it made me roll my eyes so bad. Because, mm, um, the next one was a laugh out loud. Um, things are gone. gone wrong for Alexander since the mysterious Miss Air had rejected him at Lowood. First, his bumbling new assistant had contracted a man cold, which in pre-Victorian England they believed to be far worse than a lady cold. Man flu was still a thing. My husband, when he gets sick, he's down for the count. When I get sick, I'm expected to live normally. Cook, clean, take care of the kids. Man flu. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I got another laugh out loud. Beneath his mask, his face flushed. A young lady was hugging his apprentice of all people. Such a blatant display of affection. At this hour, in the hallway? Hallway hugging definitely deserved two exclamation points. Uh, another laugh out loud. I'm not going to read them all. Uh... Charlotte is my sister, Mr. Blackwood. Alexander's mouth dropped open. But how? Well, sir, when two consenting adults... Stop! <laughs> Alex could see the resemblance now. They were both of small stature, but big in excitement. <laughs> so, when two consenting adults love each other very, very much, they have a baby. So, yeah, I ended up giving this a four. It did not make me laugh as much as uh, my Lady Jane. That's still my favorite. So, I'm going to be reading my Calamity Jane sometime next year because my TBRs are full. So, yes. I highly recommend The Lady Janies. And I can't wait to read uh, My Contrary Mary. Their new series, The Marys. Yes. Go ahead and get this one out of the way because I've already ranted and raved about this one. I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5. It's not my favorite. I knew I wasn't going to, I wasn't expecting much from it at all. But I did like some of it. And that was the backstory. And I love Edward's backstories. And the backstories of Jasper and Alice and Rosalie and Emlet, em, Emmett and Carlisle and Esme. Um, but yeah, I seriously think the V 
between Bella's eyebrows should be a character all on its own. I want, I am like a little mad. I'm, can you tell I'm being sarcastic? I'm mad that it didn't have its own little dialogue. Like, Edward, stop looking at me! Mm, Stephanie Meyer, please <laughs> learn different facial features. And uh, the editing. I think she used the same editor for Breaking Dawn with this one because the editing is just bad. This 800 page, 600, 700 page book, 600 page book, shitty editing. Um, but yeah, so let me read my thoughts. Um, I skimmed through most of what was already written in Twilight. Basically, Bella and Edward's reaction or interactions with each other in school and outside of school and in the house and the baseball field, I skimmed. But when it came to um, them racing through Phoenix to get to Bella to save her from um, James and the ballet studio, loved it. And just reading Alice's mind of how every little detail and step that she was going to do to cover up to make it seem that Bella did fall out of the window out in the hotel instead of being attacked by a vampire. Best part. Book. I know Stephanie Meyer has said that she's going to write more in the Twilight universe now. I just want a book from Alice's perspective from when she woke up as a vampire searching and finding Jasper and then finding the Cullens. That's all I want. I don't want no rewrite of Twilight from Alice's perspective. I just want Alice um, pre-vampire not pre-vampire because she don't remember who she was from the time she woke up in the asylum or from the asylum to uh, the Cullens. Meeting the Cullens. That's all. That's all. No rewrites necessary. Don't do it. But, yeah. Two out of five. No. And the last book I'm going to be talking about is Ari Shaw and the Tree of Wishes by Rashini Shachi. This is book three in the Pandava Quartet. And Rashini Shachi did my pigeon. She did boo wrong. I mean, I read the part where they branded boo this and... Ari's heart just breaking and shattering and I'm just like really you gonna do my bird like that you go so yes I really enjoyed it they finally meet their other siblings they meet the twins so all five Pandava sisters are finally together and yeah so I need to read my thoughts uh it's much better than the second book. And poor Ari. She's got another sibling. <laughs> I don't, that's all I'm saying. But yes, this is based on Hindu mythology. It takes place in Atlanta. Ari Shah, her mom runs the uh, Indian Museum artifacts in Atlanta. And, yeah, her dad is this creature. He was always destined to become this thing. And he wanted to change his life for the better for Aru. And he ended up becoming a monster. And first book, Arusha and the End of Time. She meets uh, her first sister, Minnie. In the second book, in The Song of Death, she meets Bryn, who I dislike immensely. And then in this one, she meets... Uh, the twins. I forget their names. One is like an oracle that can, uh, that does dreams. And so they need to find this tree of wishes. And along the way, Aru is wanting to wish to get her dad back or something like that. And yeah, it's just fucking crazy. This is a great middle grade series. And Rick Riordan published it. Published it so... Anything with Rick Riordan's name on it, it's bound to be an amazing read. So, yeah. 
such a great, oh, one more receipt. <laughs> such a great series. And I think the fourth book is going to be the last one that comes out next March. And I'm really upset about it. So there are the nine books I read in the month of September. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And yeah. Have you read any of these books? Let me know down in the comments. And I'll see you in my next video.